You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached the age of 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials or even starting to appear on shelves or by prescription or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Podcast and the Future Tech Health Podcast. I have uh, Louis Rosenberg, the CEO and founder and chief scientist of um, Unanimous.ai. Uh, it's a, he's developed a, what looks to be an AI human hive mind diagnosis ability for uh, conditions such as pneumonia. So, uh, Louis, thanks for coming. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've read <laughs> a lot about um, man versus machine, man versus AI, but I've also read man in partnership with AI is uh, synergistic and, you know, it leads to much more powerful results. You know, for instance, even in the, the world of chess, you know, the grandmasters of old uh, versus the grandmasters of new that work with these powerful AI chess engines, they're far stronger. So uh, I'm guessing that may be part of the thinking that led to uh, your work, but I'll ask you instead. So what led you to get into this area of work and research and study? Yeah. So, um, you know, my interest is uh, is in artificial intelligence and um, also human intelligence. And one of the things that obviously a lot of people worry about is um, is AI uh, stepping in and and replacing humans in in a lot of different tasks. And my personal view is that um, that's there's a, there's way too much of replacing people with algorithms. Uh, partly because we uh, we as a, as as a society don't actually appreciate how smart we are. <laughs> P- people are really really smart. Uh, people have knowledge and wisdom and insight and intuition that that is often hard to to articulate. And yet, uh, people are amazingly good at uh, at drawing conclusions uh, based on very limited sets of information. And uh, you know, sometimes we refer to that as intuition. Other times we refer to that as experience. But uh, it's too early to to say that we should replace that with these very very uh, algorithmic systems that are looking at raw data. And so, while most AI companies are out there uh, looking at how they can process big big data sets and find patterns and and then replace people in decision making processes. What we do at Unanimous AI is say, hey, how can we use artificial intelligence to, to amplify the intelligence of, of people? And we do that in a very unique way by connecting groups of people together into systems. And, uh, and our, our technology is called Swarm AI because it's actually modeled mm-hmm. on how swarms in nature amplify the intelligence of groups. And, um, and it turns out that nature has a lot to teach us about how to do that. So what's an example of an application of this swarm functionality and how does it work? You're not like wiring people's brains together, but you know, how are you doing it? <laughs> right. So uh, what, when we say we, we, uh, we connect people together, we, we are uh, allowing people to, to log into a system that we call swarm. They can log in from anywhere in the world. And, and when they do that, uh, a user interface pops up on all their screens at the exact same time. And, and the interface allows them all to answer questions together as a system. And, and the, the interface is very simple for people to participate in. They, they can just use their mouse or a touch screen or their phone. 
and and the interface. Uh, some people describe it as, as reminding them of, of of a Ouija board because uh, literally you could have a hundred people or a thousand people, and they're all working together to to move uh, a pointer to an answer. Now the magic happens because there are AI algorithms that are watching all of their behaviors as they're all working together in real time and determining the different levels of confidence and conviction that each person has. And it's finding the optimal combination. And so what we can do is we can have a question appear on everybody's screen, they can answer together, and then the, their results, uh, and we've, we've done a, a, a large number of, of studies with different universities, their results uh, have been statistically proven to be significantly better than if the individuals had answered on their own or if they had worked together as a group in some other way. And um, the, the, uh, the study that I believe that, that you saw that, that uh, generated your interest in what we're doing was one that was just recently published by Stanford University Medical School. And so that was one where uh, they, they wanted to see if they could have groups of radiologists, human doctors, and these were, these were small groups, just uh, six, six or seven radiologists. Uh, they were sitting at their own workstations. Some were at Stanford, some were at Duke, some were at other universities. And uh, an x-ray would pop up on all their screens at the same time. And, and then they were asked to, uh, to, to determine what's the probability that this patient has pneumonia. And first they did it just as individuals, then they did it by working together as this swarm, this real-time system. And uh, what, what the study showed was that when they were working together as a, as a swarm intelligence, they reduced their errors, their diagnostic errors by over 30%. So they had over 30% fewer errors when working together as this swarm intelligence than these individual doctors would have had by working on their own or by just taking a vote or, or um, and so, uh, and we see that uh, time and time again, which is that if we take groups of people and connect them mm. together with AI algorithms, uh, they can significantly amplify their, uh, their, their collective intelligence and, and have, um, you know, start to act, start to function basically as, uh, as an, as an artificial super expert. They're basically becoming a, a system that together is significantly smarter than any, any of the pieces on their own. So what are the elements of a, of a swarm that make it effective or not? You know, I mean, the, I'm sure people have always, the people have experienced death by meeting. We have a big meeting of people and nothing gets done. Or you, know, you look at government, that's a swarm that's just a, a freaking mess and goes nowhere. So how do you make a successful swarm? Yeah, not <laughs> so... Uh, you know, we we humans have uh, have developed lots of different ways of reaching decisions as groups, and that's something that happens in government. It happens in business. It happens, and um, and the ways you know, there's a, a few different ways that we we tend to do it as, as people. W one way that people make decisions is by taking a a vote or a poll. That's how we elect leaders. That's how government organizations make make decisions. And, and so you could ask the question, well, is a, is a vote the best way for a group to reach a decision? And um, it, it turns out that, you know, people have been using, you know, the mechanism of a vote for, uh, you know, a few thousand years, but nature has, uh, has been having groups of, groups of organisms need to make, that need to make decisions for hundreds of millions of years. And so over hundreds of millions of years, what, what nature evolved when there's a, a group of organisms and they need to, to combine their different perspectives, they don't take a vote, they don't take a poll, they don't take a survey, they form a real-time system where they're all interacting at the same time. And, and this is why birds flock and fish school and bees swarm, they, uh, they work, they're working together in real time, they're, they're pushing and pulling on each other and they're converging together. And so, um, that was in some sense the inspiration for us to, to, to build the technology that we did. We said, you know, is there, is there a method that's better than these things like polls, which cause, you know, it's, most people realize, hey, government is, is broken. You know, we could have groups of people and they can't reach decisions. And in my view it's, is that it's because polling is polarizing. That's in fact what a poll does. 
if you take a vote, you're basically just you're finding out where how a group disagrees, but uh, but you're not finding any method to to have the group converge on a solution that they can actually agree best on. Whereas nature's method of forming a swarm, it doesn't highlight where the group disagrees. It highlights where the group agrees, and it actually finds the solution that that maximizes their their agreement. And so when we, you know, when we take this, this naturally inspired method and we implement it in a, in a um, for, among people, we see that, that a swarm is significantly more powerful than a vote. And, and I, I give you a good example uh, uh, for, yeah. for anyone who's a sport, for anyone who's a sports fan, there is a, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're in the middle of March madness right now. Uh, and lots and lots of people are out there trying to predict basketball games. And, um, and mm. in fact, ESPN has, you know, has a contest where they allow people to, to fill out brackets. And they've had 19 million people fill out brackets. Um, what, what we do uh, this year is we were, we were asked by Bloomberg to have a, a group of just 30 sports fans fill out, fill out a bracket as a swarm. And so we had 30 yep. sports fans, not, not experts, just regular fans. They, they logged into the system and they put each of the, each of the basketball games. And, uh, and so far in, in the tournament, the tournament's about halfway done, the, the swarm of 30 random sports fans are in the 93rd percentile out of the 19 million pe people who, uh, who entered this ESPN contest. And so, uh, you know, these, if you take if you take thirty random people, they should be in the fiftieth percentile. But um, but when we connect those people who are in the fiftieth percentile together as a swarm, they they jump up to the ninety third percentile. They're outperforming seventeen and a half million people. Um, and and here's the really interesting thing is that ESPN they also do something that they call the people's bracket, which is they say what would happen if all nineteen million people just took a vote. And voted on on a bracket, and the third, the small thirty person swarm is significantly outperforming a nineteen million person vote, and that's because a swarm actually allows the group to converge on answers that is the best combination of their knowledge and wisdom and insight, whereas a vote is just going to find the average answer, and and those two things are often very very different, and we see this time and time again, which is that. Uh, a swarm of a very small group of people can can significantly outperform a vote or a poll or a survey of ten times those number of people, or in some cases, you know, it, it, you know, a, a thousand times or, or a million times. Well, what, again, what's your what's your swarm checklist look like? You know, this number of people is optimal. This uh, tends to screw up swarms. You know, have you studied? I don't know how many swarms you've studied or seen in action, but it's got to be best practices and there's got to be things that confound it and reduce its effectiveness or maximize its effectiveness, you know? Yeah. So um, we have, we have uh, had lots and lots of questions answered as swarms. In fact, over 300,000 questions have been answered as swarms uh, over the last uh, couple of years. And we, we do look very carefully at what makes a good, a good group of people. And, and one of the things that makes uh, that's really help, helpful is a group of people who, who have diversity of, of background or opinion or perspective. If, if, if you have a group of people and they all think exactly the same way, um, you're not gonna get a very big difference between a vote and a, and a swarm because everybody already agrees. If everybody already agrees, then, then a vote or a swarm are gonna give the same answer. Uh, but if it's a question where there is, um, where there is diversity of opinion, uh, diversity of experience, for example, if it's a group of doctors and uh, and they have uh, different backgrounds, different training, maybe different specialties, uh, we see uh, we see e you know, even more amplification of intelligence. Uh, we've we've done a study where we had groups of financial traders who um, who came in and would predict this predict the price of gold, the price of oil, and the uh, the S and P 500. You know, we actually, this was a study that was published by Oxford, Oxford University, and uh, and the the participants were diverse because they were all connecting in from from different locations. They had, uh, you know, they weren't working together in the same office. They just they had different views on 
uh, on the markets. And when they came together as a swarm, they increased their accuracy, their individual accuracy in predicting uh, these market ind indicators uh, was 55% as individuals. And as a swarm, it jumped up to 72% accurate in predicting the direction of motion of, uh, of, these, of these market indexes. A and again, uh, one of the reasons that they were so successful is that they were diverse in their perspective. They, they, had, different, they had different sets of knowledge and the swarming process combines, combines that in a, um, in a much more efficient way than if they had just taken a vote. Okay, interesting. So how, um, is this a free service or how do you envision monetizing it or you know, swarming it into uh, daily existence for people? <laughs> Yeah. So um, over the last couple of years, uh, as we've been developing the technology, we've been uh, we've been doing projects for large corporations uh, as a you know a project by project basis, and uh, and we've had you know, great great companies that we've worked with that that where we've generated intelligence for them, uh, you know big companies like Boeing or uh, Deloitte or Red Bull. Uh, but what we found is that um, we're getting interest from from a much more diverse range of of uh, of groups, uh, small companies, big companies, uh, universities, really any any group that has a team of people and they want to be able to amplify the intelligence of that team, uh, we can make them smarter using using the swarm technology. And so, uh, uh, early next month, actually, we're going to be uh, we're going to be launching. Uh, we're going to be making Swarm available as a basically as a SaaS subscription software product, where any business team can uh, can basically log into Swarm and uh, for actually very very low cost, you know, on the order of, of ten dollars a person a month, they can uh, they'll be able to amplify the intelligence of their group, whether they're making uh, business decisions or sales forecasts or uh, engineering forecasts. And and that's really the the direction that this technology is taking because it has such diverse uh, ap application. Our goal is to make it as widely available to to, to business teams uh, across the spectrum. Hmm. Okay. Uh, are there any particular flavors of things that Swarm is better at than others, and ones that it's harder to figure out how to do it and get an effect from it? Yeah. Well. Uh, one of the things that we find is that um, there's a really, really big, there's a really powerful effect when groups are forecasting. And so groups of people who are forecasting, you know, doing financial forecasting uh, or forecasting the effectiveness of marketing messages or, or forecasting inventory or, or forecasting sporting events, we see a really, a really big benefit. Uh, that said, if, um, if the forecast is too easy, meaning, everybody already can easily predict the, the, the outcome, then there's not a benefit of, of swarming. Or if the forecast is, is way too hard, meaning everybody's just guessing. There's, but so it's really, you know, the, the sweet spot is where there is, a, a, uh, where a group is, is forecasting an event where it's challenging, but they have, they have knowledge, they have wisdom, they, they have insights that, um, that give them uh, the ability to, to make a, a slightly better forecast than if they were guessing. But when we combine that group of people, that slightly better forecast becomes a really big increase. And again, it's, it's similar to that study that, that Oxford University did where uh, it, these, you know, these groups were predicting financial markets and they were, they were as individuals, they were 55% accurate. So it was a very small, like as individuals, they were just slightly better than guessing. But as a swarm, they went all the way up to 72% accurate. So as a swarm, they were able to, to really harness that, that, uh, that uh, insight and amplify it. And, and those are the types of questions or problems or tasks that are the most, that are the most effective, where um, it's hard, but human, you know, human knowledge or experience or insight uh, can, give, uh, can give some small edge, and we can then amplify that. I wonder if um, it'd be funny if you had a service where, um, you know, people that you, you could run your life by swarm, you know, you could give <laughs> most decisions or many decisions over to them and 
you'd have like, you know, I don't know if it would be a, a changing group or the same group, but it'd just be an interesting experiment if some people wanted to like live by swarm and, uh, you know, have a group of people, like I said, you know, make all these decisions for them, you know, like swarm yeah, well, we... love advice <laughs> or swarm, uh, you know, I don't know, career advice, that kind of thing. You could certainly do that. You could have, uh, you know, you, a, a group, somebody could have a swarm of people who are their, their friends and they could ask questions and, and get insight. We, we've actually seen groups of people do something slightly similar when they're doing uh, fantasy sports. So they're, they're trying to make decisions about their fantasy team. And so they have brought together their, you know, a group of, of friends in the swarm platform and then asked them for advice and, and got significant value out of, out of doing that. But I imagine you could do that for your... <laughs> For your love life or for your career decisions you could do well, for anything it would be interesting if you sponsored those kinds of things you know as part of your platform because it would give people first of all an idea of what they could do i mean it, you know it's funny it's it's, it's uh, recursive but a swarm about new ideas for the swarm platform you know you could swarm a right. swarm that kind of thing so yep. uh, it would just be interesting i mean i could see even governance and corporations you could run some functions on a test basis as a swarm instead of just a uh, board of directors only or, you know, governments, you could have some swarm elements to it, not just votes. So it, it, it seems like you could go all kinds of places, you know? Yeah. No, there's, I mean, whether it's a group of, you know, whether it's a business team or a government council or, uh, you know, or a social group, if you really want to, you know, harness the, the intelligence of a group of advisors and, and really quickly get, you know, get a sense of what, you know, what does that group really think the best decision is? Um, they can do it as a, as a swarm and it's, and it's fast and people can be located anywhere. They don't have to be in the same room. And so it, uh, yeah. it could be, uh, it could be really interesting. And, and like I said, it could be interesting to so have, you know what? You know, hey, here's my swarm of one idea for you. S uh -huh. equals one or N <laughs> equals one. If you made a tool that had certain set parameters, like, you know, that you knew, made good quality swarms uh you know it had a limit of like 10 people or another one that had a limit of 30 people and it had certain parameters and certain comments ability and well you know you had like this software this app that people or businesses would use and they just set up pre um pre-established swarm types you know maybe there's three or four or five types right. and then they could get you know swarm answers about uh you know a series of things it'd just be interesting to do something like that you know, for certain industries or just for anything and see what happens. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it, um, I think it would be interesting, especially because um, for so many industries, they, they really want to understand what, you know, what the public, what the public thinks about various things. And, and so we've, we've actually done a fair amount of work where we bring it together swarms of people just from the general public and, uh, and they can, uh, for example, we did a project for a large uh, television studio where we had swarms of people from the general public and they, they wanted those people to watch movie trailers and, uh, and, and predict if those, uh, if those movies would be successful. And, mm. um, and, they, and they get really, really, really good insights about that uh, when... Um, I remember being asked to do that in the mall like 15 years ago. <laughs> they had people with yep. clipboards and they would, they would ask you to watch movie trailers and stuff. Yep. Yeah, so oh. people can do that. Uh, you know, we've we've had groups of people do that online, where they uh, they're going to log in, the the movie trailer just pops up on all their screens at the same time, and then they converge together as a swarm on uh, on feedback about what you know, predicting how successful that that movie will be. Huh. So where um, how far along are you? You know, if I want to, uh, let's say I want to do a a swarm about this podcast and, you know, ask X number of people to listen to an episode and tell me, Hey, you know, is this the right format or what guests would you like to see on it? That kind of thing. You know, how would I go about doing that? Or is it, is it not at that stage where I could easily like, you know, swarmify this and, or start up a swarm and, uh, you know, get those answers. Oh, you certainly, you certainly could. And so, um, one of the, we, as I mentioned, the, the platform is, uh, is going to be available to the, to, to anybody who wants to to try it, um, basically in early April, uh, you could it, it, the the uh, the website is just swarm.ai, and so you could go to swarm.ai, just sign up for a free trial, 
and then uh, you could invite into the swarm, you could invite 20 of your listeners in, into a swarm and ask them questions and generate insights about what uh, you, you could, you could, you can invite 20 of your listeners in and ask them, you know, about what, uh, what future topics they would think are the most interesting. And you would very, very quickly generate insights that, um, that would be valuable. Mm, okay. And you said voting doesn't seem to be very effective. So is it more like Socratic questions that work better? Or there are I, types I, of questions is, that work better than others? So Socratic questions definitely work well, especially because um, usually what will happen is if, let's say you were going to ask, you know, you were to invite in a group of, of listeners to a swarm. Um, you, you could spend, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 minutes the, asking the asking questions to this group. And it's most interesting if the you know, previous questions inform the next questions. And so this you know, Socratic method actually is, is a really effective way to, to really dig into an issue. Um, and the nice thing is that the way the system is set up, every answer is reached in under 60 seconds. And so in, um, you know, in 15 minutes, you can, and, and very often it's, you know, the group converges in 30 seconds. So in 15 minutes, you can get through, you know, 20 or more questions that, that really give insights about, you know, whatever the topic is you're trying to explore from, from the group. And, um, mm. and we've seen, we've seen that be effective, uh, whether it's, you know, groups of, you know, the general public or, you know, very, very specific groups, you know, groups of experts, you know, and, and we've seen people, um, also want to bring together, you know, a group of industry experts and and capture their insight. Uh, that said, it's sometimes you know the most powerful to get you know groups of actual customers or, or in your case you know listeners get you know groups of listeners in and you could very quickly get you know a sense of you know what does the what does the public really want? So what about the AI assisted tools? You know, could I do a, a poll of my swarm people, you know, my potential swarmers so that I get a sense of the different cohorts that are going to be giving me answers? You know, if they give their answers and there's too many for me to process quickly, what about a keyword cloud of the common themes or elements? You know, maybe you use natural language processing to tell me what's the sentiment of the swarm answer or what are like some of the things that stick out, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, like what kind of tools would would make this process better? Yeah. So um, one of the things that, that, that we do make available is so, so taking a step back, when people come into the system, they can be completely anonymous and, and everybody's equal. Everyone has equal weight and they're anonymous. And, and that actually gets people to be you know, very honest in their, in their feelings and they can converge on answers. That said, uh, when, um, when people have a large group, sometimes they want to collect demographics about, about the population. And so you can give a, a survey in advance. When somebody comes into the system, they can they can take a survey that just indicates, you know, their their location, age, gender, or whatever demographic criteria are, and that way, when you ask a question and you generate uh, an answer of about whatever the topic is, you can then go back after, and there's there's a variety of analysis tools that will then give you give you these insights about, um, you know, this is the answer, but let's look at it by demographic, let's look at it by age, by gender, by location, by and and so you can get these these deeper level insights. Mm. Uh, yeah. So any of these other any other tools that uh, you've envisioned that would be a, a useful thing? Um, I, I mean, maybe you like shock the, the the participants whose answers you don't like. You know, just joking. <laughs> but... Yeah. No, we. Um... Actually, how about how about uh, rewarding people for giving certain? You don't want to you know uh, force their feedback with money, but you know, what if, uh, I don't know, people post uh, certain skills that they have, and then they're selected for certain swarms that are out there and available, like a matching system, and maybe they're compensated a little bit for participating in a swarm, you know, they can make some money that way, or is that a bad incentive? Uh, no, it's a, it, it could be a good incentive, uh, and it's something that we, um, that we do for sports forecasting, because sports forecasting is something where... Um, We've, we've found that swarms of just sports fans can make really, really accurate predictions uh, about sporting events, but we want to make sure that people who participate are incentivized to 
to try to try hard, right? To to give us their best their best insight. And so we uh, we tend to run those as contests where um, the people will come into the swarm and uh, and we can track their individual accuracy as well as the swarm accuracy. And then the the, the individuals who are the most accurate uh, will win, you know, monetary prizes. And that's that's really a way to get everybody to work hard. But when we do that, we've found that um, that swarms of, of sports fans can uh, can actually beat Vegas. We actually uh, we published a, a paper last year where we had swarms of uh, just 30 people predict uh, NHL hockey games, and and they did uh, over 200 games across across the season, and uh, and as as a swarm across across these 200 games across 20 weeks, the individuals, we had the individuals give their predictions on their own. As individuals, had they, had they uh, bet on the games, they would have, they would have had a 41% loss. <laughs> so they would have lost 41% of their, their money. But then we also right. looked at the swarms predictions as a swarm, uh, had they bet on the games, they would have had 170% gain uh, beating, hmm. beating Vegas. And so we see this really significant amplification. And, and again, one of the important things that people try, and so we run it as a contest, so they try, but you could, uh, you know, you, you could imagine um, doing the same thing for, you know, for predicting, really predicting anything, whether it's sporting event or predicting movie box office or predicting, you know, which products are going to, are going to sell the most. Um, and so uh, these types of contests are actually valuable for, for getting, you know, people who have a certain level of knowledge about a particular topic to actually um, try their best. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I remember um, I spoke to a couple of uh, like cryptocurrency backed platforms like Gnosis and uh, Augur, and they wanted to do prediction markets, which is not swarm exactly. It's a, I guess right. a flavor of it or a subset. Uh -huh. that, uh, you know, I don't know what happened to them, but uh, this sounds like more viable. So yeah, excellent. Yeah. So, the um, thing about right. uh, uh, the you know, prediction markets are are interesting. They just they tend to require much larger populations of people. Um, you, you know, requires mm. you know thousands and thousands of people who are each giving this little you know a single trade. Whereas what we found with with swarms is that we can have a small group. It could be ten people or twenty people, and and um, and they're you know they're participating in real time. So it's a it's a little bit more of a commitment. But but with, even with a small group. We're getting this really significant amplification of intelligence. Yeah, I'd like to go to a doctor that has, uh, you know, Watson hooked up, and also Swarm, like a Swarm doctor. <laughs> you know, like no, seriously, imagine that. You know, you go and you've yeah. got a problem, and instead of a second pin, you can get second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth pin in right there, and there's AI yeah. assisted. I mean, that would be like super powerful. I think it would be a huge benefit. You know, or a legal swarm, like you know, uh, corporations and People that are, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, if they're smart, they have a legal team or they have a medical team or whatever. And so it's a, a de facto swarm or, a, you know, an ad hoc swarm. But this could be really useful for those kind of applications. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, any, any group that, you know, any group of experts that um, can get, can become a super expert by, you know, mm. by combining their insights in, in, um, in an efficient way. And that's, you know, that's really what the, what a swarm is. It, it allows that group of experts to, you know, to converge on an answer that is smarter than, um, than the vast majority of the individuals would have achieved on their own. Right. Well, very good. Well, I appreciate you coming. Um, so what's the best way for people to, uh, can they get on an early, early notification list for the swarm.ai platform or, um, yeah, they could, I mean, uh, we're, we're getting close. You know. Yeah, we're getting close. They could uh, they could go to swarm.ai. They can sign up for our newsletter. Um, we actually put out sports picks every week on, on our newsletter, so a lot of people follow it just because uh, they, <laughs> they get uh, they, they get good predictions. They're actually pretty really good predictions. Uh, but uh, at swarm.ai, there's um, they can see what the platform looks like, and um, uh, like I said. Uh, it's literally any day when uh, people will be able to start doing a free trial. So, okay. Well, very good. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and uh, it's super interesting. I hope that you take it many places and, uh, and really make a big impact. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Was, this was fun.
You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials or even starting to appear on shelves or by prescription or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoy the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you. Thank you.